All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special show. We're we're crazy. What do you, what can we say? We're crazy. I am Daniel Brown, and I'm here with Tim Baker. I do not support that in the show. <laughs> We're crazy. Yeah, that's what we do. We be crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. We were just trying to figure out what should we talk about this week. Well, the price is up, so we'll talk about that some, but what else? Well, nobody wants to talk about Trump getting elected as we speak in the Electoral College. Nobody wants to talk about time. that. <laughs> yeah, no, you wouldn't want to bring that up, would you, Daniel? No, no, thank you. But I'm just so- glad I didn't keep on betting. <laughs> yeah, you want to bet, Tim? Well, it's not over yet. <laughs> He's going to win. All Check right, but on. here, so so we figured, because we didn't want to talk about that, we'd, we'd get a little crazy. That's one of my favorite lines from Bob Ross. He's always like, oh, let's let's get a little crazy here. Let's put a, a nice big tree in here. Oh, look at that there. This is your bravery test. So, oh, so Bob Ross, please forgive us for that. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and call this radio show and uh, see what happens. So I, I might cut a little bit out here if we have to wait. But here goes. We're going to call and talk about Bitcoin. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here. If you get on now, you uh, you might get on the air. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Uh, with you in the studio tonight. It's Ian, Melanie, and Daryl. We do have Skype. You can Skype into the show at Skype username LRN.FM. As we go to the phones and to your thoughts, we're going to go to uh, two callers. Now, usually this is against my better judgment, but I didn't screen the call. Daniel and Tim, you're on the line. Uh, normally, <laughs> we only allow one call. Definitely against your better so judgment. Try not to talk over top of uh, each other. That kind of thing. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, we we will do our best. Hey Ian, so we hey. uh we've we've spoken to you before, and uh, we were doing a show tonight. We're on LRN.FM, and we're we were re- about to record, and we're like, uh, what should we talk about? Oh, I got a crazy idea. LRN has a bit of time left. Why don't we get a uh, uh, free talk live? I guess has a bit of time left. Why don't we give them a quick call just for kicks and see what happens? And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, Bitcoin. So, so we're actually recording right now and we just wanted to say hello. <laughs> oh, you guys are the new, you, me, BTC guys. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Very good. Which show is this? <laughs> yeah, I, I was confused. I was like, I, I don't recognize these voices. I know this guy, Daniel Brown. Oh, he looks you. familiar. That, All right. That, <laughs> well, we're not that Wait, big but how yet. Are there Two shows on LRN at the same time. So what There's he's not. so he's these guys are a podcast. So their show may be on LRN tonight. I don't know the podcast loop. You never really okay, so know. Okay, yeah, it's not necessarily yeah. live. You never really know, right? So that's when when you said your show's on LRN, I'm like, wait a minute, we don't have a live <laughs> Tuesday night show after Free Talk Live. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Darryl, nope. Did you program a new yet. Tuesday night show? <laughs> nope. Huh. Yeah, right. yeah, just just a podcast, just recorded. But uh, so I guess uh, I, what we thought we would talk about is the price because it's pretty much at a peak right now. And you know, seven ninety one ish. It's about a three year high, something like that. So I figured you basically we'd... since the last time Bitcoin hit its maximum of like eleven, twelve hundred dollars, this is the highest it's been since then, right? Correct, correct, yeah. And uh so I guess the question is what what do you think? We we read some articles just now that were saying, well, it's probably another peak for now, and there is tons of technical analysis, and I don't really care about that. But I don't know. I know it's always just a gut feeling, but what the heck do you think? Is it is it at a peak, and is it going to crash a little bit for a while? Do you expect a rally? Do you expect, you know, 2,000? <laughs> I don't know. Any, any crazy gut feelings? So- I, I'm going to give you some options here because I'm a libertarian and libertarians love the options. It's either going to go up to 10,000. It's <laughs> either going to stay somewhere around 800 or it's going to crash down to about four. <laughs> all right. It all depends right. on yeah, you know, you how many regulations wind up getting implemented over the next couple of years. Well, wait, uh, so what, what you mean by that? What sorts of wars wind up getting started if people in Venezuela start using more Bitcoin? There's a lot of things yeah. that I can't foresee. I don't have the Bitcoin crystal ball. Uh, is the block size going to expand? Is the block size going to shrink? Are there going to, is there going to be a hard fork and there's going to okay. be two blocks? So, uh, Melanie, do you want to jump in here with any predictions? I am 
so not qualified to predict Bitcoin <laughs> prices. The they, only thing I would say is that anyone? I'm not sure how much regulation. I mean, kind of the point of Bitcoin is to get around regulations. So if the price is being affected that much by regulation, I don't I don't know if that's. I think the suggestion right, was that so, regulation would drive people to Bitcoin. Is that what you were saying, oh, okay, Daryl? Okay. Well, regulations could drive people to it. Regulations That's could true. drive people away. It depends on what <laughs> kind of regulation. Is there going to be a, a white chain and a black chain to where anything that ever went through the dark web can't go to Coinbase or BitPay? I think it's silly to try to predict what Bitcoin is going to do. That's I why mean, I said it's either going to go right. up, stay the same, or go down, and I don't know. I uh, you know You can look at the chart. And you can try to extrapolate something from it. I'm looking at the full length of the history of Bitcoin since, you know, way back. And it started shooting up in 2014 or like at the end of 2013. And then it crashed back down. It crashed as far down as, you know, near to $200. And it's been going up pretty steadily since then, uh, since, you know, basically 2015. All of 2016, it's pretty much been on average going up. Right. Um, is it going to fall off a cliff tomorrow? It could. Is it going to keep going up? It absolutely could. We don't know. You can look at the history of gold. You can look at the history of silver and, you know, you can kind of extrapolate something about what they might continue to do on the future because we've had, you know, Thousands a thousand years. years or more of history with this, you know, product being used as money. But Bitcoin, we're still coming up on the first decade. I mean, it hasn't even been 10 years. Since Bitcoin was released, it was 2009, late 2008 or something like that. It went Satoshi. Early 09. Yeah, Satoshi came out with the, the white paper, then, you know, the real thing came out. And uh, so, you know, 10 years in the history of money is nothing. I mean, that's the blink of an eye. And so ultimately, it would be futile, I think, to make any kind of predictions. I will say that I'm <laughs> hoping for the best. And uh, I want to see, we, you know, I'd love to see Bitcoin hit $1,000 or more. Uh, coming up here in 2017, and 5,000 would be fantastic. I mean, the sky truly is the limit when it comes to this technology, but there are some things that are standing in its way, which uh, is the Bitcoin community itself. I mean, there's this infighting that's been going on over how the software should be developed in the future, specifically around a technology known as the uh, the block size. I, I would say that's one of two big arguments, yeah. and the other is you know, what sort of regulation and should Bitcoiners be working for regulation, you know, should people promote, we need regulations, uh, we need this to be given some sort of legal status. If you need legal regulations, status. then go back to FRNs. Well, what do you guys think, Daniel and Tim? <laughs> I, I have to say I love Daryl's answer because we've had a running joke since the beginning of the show. I guess this will be 154, I believe, episode 154. And our running joke has been that we never commit to anything. Uh -oh. we're, Hopefully we're, the running, uh -oh. running joke wasn't a bad internet connection, <laughs> a bad Skype connection. You totally just dropped out all of those words, whatever you just said, after, uh, after you mentioned your joke. and then. All right, all right. Well, the running joke has been that we never commit to anything. It's always like, hey, well, it could be good, it could be bad, this could happen, this could happen. And so, you know, <laughs> so I like Daryl's answer. That's where I'm at. Hopefully that can Well, I'll tell through. you what I'm committed to. I'm committed to Bitcoin right now. I mean, sure, there could be something that outdoes Bitcoin. Yeah, you could argue that some of the other altcoins have some pretty neat features. But Bitcoin is the big boy on the block, and it's there, and it's established. And so I'm, I'm pretty committed to that. I want to see it be a success and continue. It already is, but I want to see it continue uh, to succeed because, really, it helps people be more free. It yeah. is, uh, is an amazing, for listeners that are new to the idea, it's a decentralized currency that uh, allows you to break free from banks and break free from government money. And that's it's incredible how much that means. It's uh, it's hard to really uh, overstate how important that concept is. And, and I, I need like, to start understanding it. I like being able to use Bitcoin to buy health food supplements at 15% off. Through Purse, SaveItPurse.com. Yeah. I, I, like, I put an order in earlier today and got it picked up within 30 minutes. 15% like, off on two pounds of spirulina. I like being able to walk <laughs> into real life stores like we can here in Keene, New Hampshire. Yeah, and spend local Bitcoin. burger, corner news. There's a handful of them now. Yeah, you, you've been competing with me, Daryl. I've been trying to get 18% off all day. I guess you stole it from me. <laughs> <laughs> we can now get our cars repaired for Bitcoin here in Keene, yeah. New Hampshire, which is awesome. How about you guys? Where do you guys live? I'm in Pittsburgh. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and yeah, Tim Tim's in Pittsburgh, so that that's where I'm from. What's but the, what's the Bitcoin real life scene like out there? I mean, big cities, you should have some places you can go, right? 
I think I can get Japanese food and maybe coffee someplace. <laughs> nice. It's not bad. We're going to work on those Japanese food places. Yeah, actually, we were going to go to... I think that's the Japanese place you're talking about, Tim. We were going to go to one, oh, a year oh, or two ago. Didn't and it? we we got this big plan to go downtown. We're going to get sushi or fish or whatever. And the day we were planning to go, they closed down. Eh, so that was kind of ah. sad. <laughs> <laughs> how about Bitcoin vending machines? What's uh, how many of those do you guys have around you? I've never actually used one. I don't know. <laughs> <What? laughs> Neither have I. I'm never going to pay the premium. And you guys actually, have that, that many anyway. That's exactly what it is. It's a premium. I can't bring myself to spend more than more <laughs> yeah. than a few percent exactly. uh, until now with well, Coinbase you know, and the IRS. So I don't know. <laughs> yes, I see where you're coming from. So the website for you guys, by the way, you, me, and btc.com. That's your podcast, as you said, over 150 episodes. Congratulations, guys. That's, uh, you know, three years. That's a pretty good run. Oh, yeah. Well, thank oh, you. you. You helped us out on one. So thanks for that. <laughs> right on. Hey, thanks for calling and sharing tonight. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about what's happening, of course, here in New Hampshire, which arguably has the largest Bitcoin community known to the world, uh, like per capita, right? Then uh, you should check out. Uh, actually, there's going to be a new website coming soon. I don't think I should say what it is right now. Don't but, say it yet. Yeah, I won't. I won't say it yet. But uh, you can go to freekeen.com, click the Bitcoin category, and you'll find all kinds of cool news. Now I, I'll tell you what uh, miles milestone I'm really looking forward to with Bitcoin is the fast. year 2022. When Bitcoin hits 13 years old, then it will officially be older than World Championship Wrestling. Thanks for the call, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, have you heard about Bitcoin? Not Bitcoin, but Bipcoin. Bravo, India, Papa, coin. Bipcoin is a new cryptocurrency that you can start mining today for free on ordinary computers. Unlike most altcoins, Bipcoin is not a clone of Bitcoin. Bipcoin is based on entirely new, more recent, and better code called CryptoNote. So unlike Bitcoin, Bipcoin has truly untraceable transactions. And we're working on adding distributed DNS functionality to Bipcoin. We're calling this .bip, and it will provide uncensorable domain names in an easy-to-use interface. Unlike previous systems attempting this, .bip will be simple for both a website owner and for people viewing websites. This will get it the worldwide adoption we need to keep speech free, and cyber squatting will not be a problem. Please help out with a donation or just share this with your friends if you can't chip in some cash or Bitcoin to save free speech around the world, because there are incoming regimes that hate honest criticism. Go to bipcoin.org. Once again, that's bravo, India, papa, coin.org. All right. That was fun. O older than world I I'm confused by the last <laughs> comment. What? O older than world championship wrestling? I I don't know. He was, I guess he was just making a joke about it. I don't know. All right, it doesn't matter. We got our we got our website mentioned, so that's a score, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh Yeah, so I guess uh, all you listeners out there that are listening to our show, not Free Talk Live cuz that that part's over. But everyone <laughs> that's listening to our show, Thanks for listening. That was fun. This is episode number 154. That was a lot of fun. I mean, they talked for a while, but I guess that's their job, so... That's normally just what happens with our guests. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, then we just sit here and go, All right, yeah, I, 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 I get it. I, I get that the, the question was kind of like, you're just going to say what's in the middle, but yeah, that's, that's what we do. We need someone who's going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have a question for you, Tim, but we're going to I'm going to pause real quick because I was doing some extra audio stuff for that Skype call and there's a bit of a lag. So I'm going to turn that off so I can have a regular call with you. I'll be back in two seconds. There we go. So I got that cleaned up now. I should be able to hear you with a little bit less lag. And yeah, so my question for you is because uh, we didn't quite have time to squeeze your voice in there. It's not important enough. So, but I, it is important enough for this part, I, I guess, whatever. But what do you think? We didn't get your prediction there. Do you have any gut feelings for the future of Bitcoin? Are you going to pull the classic YMB non-committal nonsense? What the heck do you think? Well, seeing as how you don't really care, I'm just going to talk to the people listening. I Good. think I don't want to hear your voice anyway, so don't no, talk I get, to me. I get, I get that. I get that. Daniel, he's been going through some stuff today. He... Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I I think Bitcoin is going to be on its way up because even I mean, even though it is like it's the high what he said the highest it's been since whenever it uh it crashed down and I mean the highest before it it went all the way up and then crashed down um from like eleven hundred to how much did it go down to 
Yeah, I actually think for a few minutes there was this really weird crash down to like 150 or 175. I thought it was something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in general, the number I would say is like two or two fifty. That was kind of the level. Okay, yeah, yeah. I feel like stuff is a little bit more like the whole just the world situation, and even if it's not the true world situation, whether you want to argue if it's like the media drumming stuff up, it's still most of the people's perceptions of the worlds, uh, how yeah. the world is working. So I think that's all you need to do to drive stuff up, or just to put. I mean. It's either they go to that or they they go to gold, I imagine, or both. Right. So, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking that both will. I was about to complain to you because you're the one when we when we were having those conversations about Trump several episodes back. You're the one that was always like, "Well, what difference does it make? He's just another president. He's not going to destroy the world." But you're right. Even if that's true, and it, even if it is just the media being all hyped up, it's the perception that matters. It's the perception that gets people to buy Bitcoin. And so regardless, who, yeah, you're right. It is just another president and he will just do whatever, same as everyone, whatever. But because of this perception, which I believe is pretty different than it has been in the past, not always, there have been plenty of times where people kind of freaked out and stuff happened with prices and markets. But compared to the past decade or two, oh, well, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if that's true because there were, there was 2008 and there was 9-11. Yeah, so, but all again. Is this different than that? Yeah, well, because, I mean, now Bitcoin's like 2008 was right before Bitcoin. That, But that, I mean, that was a housing market that fucked a, like, a lot of people. And yeah. And obviously that was pretty important. I mean, 9-11, I don't think was that, are you talking like for messing up the economy well yeah no 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 no. i'm I'm still no i'm still talking about the perception what gave the people perception of catastrophe because you're right with trump and everything and the russians and fake news and all that crap yeah people are kind of freaked out now but i guess what i'm wondering is aren't they always kind of freaked out about something right Oh, they were a lot of people were freaked out about Obama. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. I guess like my idea is that because we're always saying like stuff is worse now. I mean, most people are, and like most people be like, "Oh, the kids these days don't have any respect." That, <laughs> yeah, or exactly. Just like, "Oh, the money doesn't pay that much anymore," or <laughs> "Oh, people people never used to swear in public back in my day." It's like, "Oh yeah, sure," <laughs> but <laughs> I think there probably is some kind of truth. Like, you can't say that like cultures don't decline so there's got to be some truth to it so i think probably what happens is we just keep on doing that until something really bad happens it's just nothing like catastrophic the world over has happened for a while probably since like world war ii so yeah i don't know if maybe we're maybe something will happen because i i mean i'm not even just talking about like the election and then the russians being involved with it which that I mean, that's a big thing I'm talking about. Just like how I mean, it's a joke now on the internet, but everyone is just like, "Oh, 2016 was real, just like weird in general." <laughs> and like even just something like that, like there's just this feeling of like something might happen. I mean, this has happened before, but they like, I, I guess it'd be similar. Like, uh, no, I mean, the Cuban Missile Crisis obviously was like bigger because there were nuclear weapons. But I guess I mean at the same time we have nuclear weapons. Russia does, so if we shoot them at them, it's still the same problem. But apparently that was only, like, just avoided. So I, I'll i stick to my thing of saying that I think Bitcoin is probably going to go up. I think anything that isn't tied to, like, straight to any, any kind of government is going to go up. I mean, maybe the stocks will go up. I heard they were doing better right after Trump went, but I don't pay attention to them at all. So I haven't heard yeah. anything about them since. I guess I would say the biggest thing for me is just the common sense that nothing lasts forever and that eventually the U.S. is. Like, yeah, yeah, people have been freaking out, like I said, freaking out. Maybe that'll be the title of this episode, freaking (laughs) out. Yeah, people have been freaking out about the United States and the debt and the dollar for decades and there was World War II even a few more decades before that. 
And people were obviously freaking out about that. It was a world war. <laughs> but so, yeah, in one sense, you can say, well, yeah, everybody's always freaking out. So w what are we worried about? Everyone's just got to chill out. We could be hippies or whatever. In one sense, you could argue that. But still, even if that's true, that doesn't change the fact that nothing lasts forever that the U.S. will fall apart eventually. It might not be in our lifetimes, our live times. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it might our not be in our time. lifetimes, but I'm not just talking about the U.S. either. There's the banks. There's the stock markets. There's, you know, land prices. There's a million things that could collapse at any time and that do collapse all the time. That's like what I just said, 2008, 9-11, and I wasn't really alive before that, so whatever happened before that, what? stuff you were, happened. You were, what? No, I was alive, but not really <laughs> conscious. And even then, like barely, I, I was only alive for a few years before that. So, but I think no. there was a World Trade bombing in like '93. It yeah, didn't do anything. No, yeah, to you're it. right. Yeah, in the basement. You're right. Yeah. But the point is that even if it, I, I'm not just talking about the U.S. collapsing. I'm talking about anything, pretty much anything crazy that happens, like Trump getting elected or the Russians, whatever, and somebody getting assassinated. It doesn't matter. All right. Stuff is going to happen and people are going to get interested in Bitcoin. There, there, there's no at the un, until the, the same rule applies to Bitcoin, the same rule that, that nothing lasts forever. That applies to Bitcoin, too. But as far as I'm concerned, we're not even close to, to that point yet where, that's, where Bitcoin's going to fall apart. So the only direction that Bitcoin can go for a good long while, as far as I can tell, is up. And yeah, eventually other stuff will come along, just like the dollar is getting replaced and losing value. Yeah, it'll get replaced. Fine. But I don't think we're anywhere close to that. And I think all kinds of other stuff is going to collapse and ruin lives before Bitcoin does. So, yeah, <laughs> I expect Bitcoin to go up. Well, why, that's, nice, what's that's, that? a nice, that's a nice jolly prediction. What? I, Cause, no, it sounds I say like ruin kind of lives and Tim's laughs. Yeah, <laughs> that's not cynic. Oh, cynical. <laughs> like, my bad. <laughs> that's not cynic. No, you're just like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Bitcoin's going to collapse yet, but. I mean, don't, don't you agree? No. Yeah, I do. I, and it, but I mean, this stuff is kind of, if you look at the, the systems or most of this stuff and it's like, this can't last forever. Em empires don't ever. And then this stuff just doesn't like, it eventually has to culminate in something. At least you'd think, but it's held together longer than like people have been predicting that it's just going to crash and the gold's going to go to $300,000 since the nineties or probably since the sixties. As soon as the hippies came, they were like, America's done. Wait, so w would you say it has to end in something? Are you are you talking about like the universe, or are you talking about no, the U.S. Uh, or Bitcoin? I'm talking about the, the the. I mean, everything. I guess eventually something it gets replaced by something else. But I was talking about the U.S. Okay. Um, and and just like like uh, or even like you think it's just a specific program like Social Security, or or just or just more broad or just a broad thing of like the banks. Eventually, one of something breaks. Something has to eventually break, or people are just like this doesn't even make any sense anymore. So, I, I'd say eventually something has to happen. But stuff like people have been predicting that it's going to just fall apart for a while. Because I don't want to. There's a lot of people who just like. I guess it's kind of like fear mongering, but I think they probably believe it. Like the dollar vigilante does it a lot. About oh my god! Everything's gonna fall apart. Yeah, that's what like I was specifically thinking of, and it's like they've been saying it, and then I'm like, people have been saying this since the 70s. And yeah. It's always like, yeah, it's gonna ha definitely happen. It can't, and I'm like, I agree with the logic, yes, that it can't go forever, but I think they're they they have they they're controlling everything to keep themselves still moving, so they're gonna keep on doing it till they run the wheels off it probably yeah it, so if you, if you try to simplify this as much as possible you know the the simple statements that you can make are like well the u.s or or even just the nation state powers in general have the most power on earth that's true 
I mean, they have military power and 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 what how else what would be the phrase like mental influence, social influence? They have the most power by far. And so the question then becomes like, well, what? So you're right, Tim. Yeah, they're going to they they obviously it's in their interest to preserve themselves, of course, and they have the most power. So it's like, well, if they have the most power and they're going to commit that power to preserving themselves, how could they possibly disappear? Right. If you had to simplify it, that's that's what it would come down to. Uh, Before I continue, does that sound fair? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So then the question is like, what what is it then? What's going to topple them? And uh, I don't know the answer to that. Is Bitcoin one of the answers? Is is just a social movement? Like, like a lot of people said about Trump, is 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 it is it a solution to just be anti-establishment and say, oh wait, <laughs> this is a joke? Well, I don't. Well, the government rules, uh, taxes. That's crazy. And and yeah, I mean. People are believing that stuff more often these days. But is that the solution to the nation state? Like, like if they have the most power and they're going to commit that power to preserving themselves, what is the solution? I, I don't know the answer. Do you? A solution for someone working against it? Yeah. Like, well, then okay. how are they going to end if those two premises are true? The only way it can end is it has to work it. it against work itself. It. Yeah, it has because like what we were, what I was saying before, what we were saying before about how eventually the the systems have to uh, have to mess up. So, like the whole idea of agorism, I think is probably the best way of actually fighting against. If like if you want to hurt hurt that system or kind of contribute to it slowing or falling apart, which is probably, I mean, I can't really. I mean, I don't even know if a guy even necessarily would. Like tell someone, no, nah, I probably tells them they should do it. But they should do what? Agorism, which is just agorism is some kind of like I forget the exact definition, but it's about pretty much either gray market or black market deals as a way yeah. to like as a I, way to work outside of the economy. Yeah, a, a big part of it is self sufficiency, right? Where you don't have to Our depend. Agorism? Yeah. It can be. Not necessarily. The agorism can be like something where they would classify it as economic terrorism. Like where you, <laughs> you just, I sell these tomatoes for cash just for the sake of not paying taxes on it. Right. Because right. then that's just them. And then, and then I kind of, and then you kind of spread, people would say you spread the idea then with doing that. And like I said, gray or black, more well, gray meaning just like legal things, but just not reporting it, not. Right. Doing stuff like it, that. It's not just about spreading the idea, though. The, the fact is that if you commit part of your life to agorism, to living outside the system, then and being self-sufficient, then you, you actually become free more, uh, as opposed to if you're in the system, then they tell you what to do and control you. So it's not just about spreading the message. It's about actually trying to be free. So my next question is, is there anything that you that you do that you're willing to share that would be classified as agorism? I'm, I guess, what, are, do under-the-table jobs count? Do you do any of those that you're willing to share? I, I, I don't know. Any, anything? Or, or even if you don't, what would you recommend? What's the easiest? I mean, just cash. Deal. Like, if you, any kind of job that you work, especially if you... Or in just a higher position, a lot. I found like a lot of blue collar people, like if it's if it's like materials or stuff like that, they will take they'll take cash and they'll give you like an extra deal on it just because they like if or if it's someone who has to like come into your house or come to your property, like they're delivering something, especially like material. Like I would say materials or uh, I mean I got, I've never really had a plumber at my house, but I kind of always just figured they did too. Where if you give them cash, they can report yeah. less, and then it's less on taxes. I don't know. That, that'd that be pretty tough, though. If your full-time job was a plumber... Actually, I've honestly been wondering about this myself, because no, I've been... No, I mean, I've heard, I've heard a plumber say that, that that's what you do, and, like, if you build... If you're a construction worker, you don't, you don't 
ask for, and you don't uh if you get cash you normally give someone a discount and you don't report all of it or you yeah. might not depending on how much it is you might just not report if it's like four hundred dollars it normally might be like a four fifty job or something like that and then you just do that you probably just don't even report anything yeah i i guess i it's just i because i've been wondering about this myself recently because i've been wondering about the prospects of like what if i just ran the website you me and btc.com what if that was my full-time job because i like that idea i would love to be my own boss and i've been wondering how the heck i would handle taxes like yeah i could just not report stuff but they've got to find out eventually right and come looking and they've got to find something and even if they don't find something, they've got to be pissed enough that they'll figure some way to put me in jail or find me or something. And I've been wondering how realistic that is to expect to run my website without paying taxes. And I have trouble believing that it's going to be very easy. But are you? But you're saying that people do that kind of stuff? Not running a website. Part of the problem with running the website is that you're not dealing with cash. Then even if you're dealing with Bitcoin. If they start getting more into about tax and Bitcoin, you're going to run into trouble because you're probably then just going to, unless you can get more people to, to accept Bitcoin so you can pay in it, you're going to have to like transfer it into a bank account or sell it on local Bitcoins, whatever you're going to do. And that might come up. But if you can do local Bitcoins for just cash, you could. Um, but that get a little bit weird if you're constantly just finding some dude on the street to transfer money with what I'm saying, like people who you meet face to face. And you can just hand them cash because you are like you don't you're not bringing in like an extra fifty thousand. It's just why not? People, it could be. It could be, but a lot of I mean, I think if if you're gonna take that much money, you kind of you need some place to hide it. So I don't think you're gonna take Bitcoin. that much extra money, huh? Bitcoin. Yeah, but in, are you buying off local bitcoins? Okay, you're yeah. you're saying you have to transfer it into Bitcoin, and that's normally watched. And, yeah, and you just can't like ever we, put it, you can't put anything like that in your bank account. Because then as soon as like, right. like, that's where it's going to look weird. So why did $2,000 just show up? Right. And then you put it right. To- <laughs> yeah. And just like we were saying with, with on Free Talk Live earlier in the show, and this is worth mentioning just in case anyone happens to not know this yet, if anyone's kind of new to Bitcoin and listening right now, which would be kind of weird because. It's hard enough for people to listen to this show at all, let alone to not be Bitcoin people and listen. But anyway, <laughs> if if you if you don't know this, if it it costs extra to buy Bitcoin privately. It's that simple. Like it, the cost uh, if you're going to get Bitcoin at a 1% premium on Coinbase or it used to be Circle but they don't actually do it anymore. If you're going to buy Bitcoin at a very small premium, the extra cost is covered by your by your privacy. You're going to have to give up your privacy to get cheap Bitcoin. If you want to buy Bitcoin privately, on the other hand, to be to remain private, you have to pay more. You have to pay for your privacy, which is total BS. You should nobody <laughs> should ever have to pay for their privacy. But it's the way it works in Bitcoin. So what you're saying is, Tim, if you're co- if you're doing physical work and you know delivering stuff or working in people's houses, and if you're accepting cash for that, it's hard to get it into Bitcoin and hide your full salary, right? Because you're going to either take a giant cut by paying for your privacy, or you're going to take a giant cut by paying for taxes, <laughs> right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, like you, if someone running a website or an online thing, probably like Bitcoin might help them, especially if you could just get paid directly in Bitcoin. Yeah, which if is really just, like, nice. If you were able, to, if you were able to subsist like off of just off of donations. Well, donations, or there are some ad agencies. There's even one that's called like I think it's called like aads dot net, and the the first A is for anonymous, so it's anonymous ads dot okay. net. And they do. They don't collect any information. Everything happens in Bitcoin. They run the ads and you get money. 
And uh, so there are options, but I don't think that would pay nearly as much as our other ad networks do. So it's be some weird ads. Well, yeah, probably, (laughs) probably plenty of sketchy stuff. No question about it. And uh, so again, that's what sucks. Like, that's why I guess that's kind of a Snowden idea where like, well, it doesn't matter if you can be free. It doesn't matter if you can be private the only way that you're going to live a truly free life is to just have that privacy. And, and I just mentioned Snowden because he seems he seems to have related ideas. I'm not saying that this is exactly what he says. I don't know everything about him. But all I'm saying is that it seems like a ripoff that even with Bitcoin, you have to pay more to be private. Right? That's why the government is such a problem. I mean, people say, well, you could just leave or, you know, people don't really support this publicly. But, yeah, you could work under the table or you could you you can be private. It's possible, but it costs money. And that's where it's kind of a moot point. It's like, well, that sucks. <laughs> I don't know what the response is to that. I'm, I just think that kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people suck. We'll go back to that. <laughs> Oh, geez. All right. Well, what do you think, Tim? Does this bring us to a good kind of conclusion point to start bringing up advice of the week? Are we ready to do that? Yeah, I guess. All right. Yeah. So what what do you got for us, Tim? What's your advice of the week? Anything good? Cause anarchy in your hometown and hope it spreads everywhere and Bitcoin goes through the roof. No. <laughs> well, that's not advice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't mean. I don't mean anarchy either in like the way that we use it. I mean anarchy in the way that the New York Times would use it. And just like throw bricks through just random <laughs> windows for no point, and just wear balaclavas and have weird baklavas. colored hair. <laughs> that, that balaclavas. That was baklava in- is a piece of cookie. Exactly, they might be the same thing, but it's definitely a cookie. Yeah, that we we had this conversation like probably in like episode thirty yeah, where probably. you were trying to talk about balaclavas, Bal- and you said <laughs> baklava, and we had this whole discussion. <laughs> what? Wait, no. What is it actually called? No, no, baklava is a cookie, and I think balaclava is the right term for whatever. But okay. you were you had it wrong before, and, and <laughs> during a recording, you said something about wearing baklava, <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to go through all this stuff. So yeah, if, if all you listeners want to hear it, I don't know what episode it was, so I guess, oh, darn, you'll just have to listen to them all. Crap, oh, whatever. Yeah, I'm sure everyone was just like, no, I need to hear him fuck up another <laughs> word. Buy buy Bitcoin, I guess we'd say that a decent oh, number of weeks. Buy Bitcoin. Now, what's my <laughs> advice supposed to be? You already gave advice. You can't take it all. Golly. See, and you, you, you'll be taking both of our advice. You got the double seal of approval uh, that actually is not any kind of a seal of approval. Please don't take us up on any kind of uh, investing <laughs> advice. We are not actually investors. We read... Uh, confu- I, I can't even read a chart without getting annoyed at how <laughs> investors talk, so I'm nowhere near, I don't know what the fuck is going on. That's actually um, a really good point, and I, w- <laughs> I was going to make the same disclaimer. My advice was going to be buy Bitcoin. We talked about the price at the beginning of the show, and I do legitimately believe that oh, in the long run, there is very little reason to believe that you will lose money on a Bitcoin bet. So I, I would recommend, uh, no, that's not the right word. <laughs> I will strong. continue buying it whenever I find the opportunities to. And if you think that that's a good idea, then you are free to do that as well. So that's my first bit of advice. And no, it's not investment or banking advice. It's just an idea that I like. But because Tim took that, I will proceed on to a little extra bit of advice, which is, I guess I'm just going to say find privacy and find freedom. Like I said, I, I don't know the answer. I don't know how we deal with it where pre- where privacy and freedom come at a cost, even though they shouldn't. And it's like, well, you know, we're, I'm going to avoid taxes, but I'm going to pay an extra 10% on Bitcoin. I mean, maybe it's a little better, but it's still kind of a ripoff. I don't know what the answer is. Somebody out there has to have a crazy idea that is going to give people freedom cheaper. And uh, so find it. Find that idea. Find find your own freedom. Agorism, that's a good idea. Just, you know, it's off-gridding is what, the way that some people practice agorism. 
if you're interested in it, it's going to be expensive and you're going to lose a lot of luxuries, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Maybe it's still fun. Maybe it's still a good idea. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just throwing ideas around, but I think you should think about it. <laughs> find, <laughs> find some way to be free and to be private as cheaply as possible. So Tim, we're about ready to wrap up, but we got, I'm going to squeeze a few minutes in here because, uh, I don't, I don't didn't track that whole recording and I'm going to cut some out. Like I said, so I don't really know how far along we are, but this is something I want to do even without just making time for it. (laughs) But uh, we got to mention Patreon again. So Tim, can you tell us what Patreon is and why people should check it out? Patreon is this, I mean, it's a pretty cool idea. It's a way to support your favorite content contributor content. I fucked that up already. Content. (laughs) Content producers. I'm leaving favorite, all that in, so you you got it. <laughs> your favorite content producers, or your second favorite, or just just someone you want to just throw five dollars at, or your least favorite, us. Yeah, I mean, wherever <laughs> we are, just make sure we you put the money up. It doesn't matter. I don't give a fuck about your opinion. Just give me twenty bucks because I sell out for low. <laughs> but yeah, it's instead of having to worry about. I mean, you can always kind of, you can donate. Patreon is cool because it, you can set up like a, it's a monthly donation. Or I guess, well, can you set different times it, or is it always? Some people do monthly. Some people do, like for content producers, some people make cartoons. So some people do per cartoon. And in our case, obviously it's per podcast, which is normally once per week. So you can donate 10 cents per podcast or you can donate $10 per podcast and it's totally up to you you can stop at any time and you get perks that's the bit that's the best part about it you can get shout outs on twitter and on the air yeah we'll get we'll send you a bumper sticker for different amounts and there are goals involved too so if we reach certain goals then we'll start doing special perks just for our patrons which include updates and special news that nobody else gets that we won't put on Twitter and stuff. And the best one, my favorite, is the goal for an ad-free, uncut after party, which we could do every single week if we reach this goal. Then every single week, we'll record a few extra minutes after the regular show And it will only be for patrons. Only people that subscribe, that truly support us, will get these extra few minutes of craziness and commentary about the show and whatever. And it'll be uncut. No censoring whatsoever. So that's a goal in there. All of that can be found at you, me, and btc.com slash feed us. The idea there is that we need to make a living. I even mentioned just in this show how... I wish that I could make my full living off of this show, and you can help make that happen, and you can feed me. So you, me, and btc.com slash feed us. We're looking for our first five or six solid patrons. We have one right now, and we need a few more to just be truly committed to show that they care about the show. (laughs) That's a good one. To show that you care about the show, and, uh, and you can do it. You me and btc.com slash feed us and we would deeply appreciate it we joke all show long but this is the one part where i get to be serious it means the world to us every bit of support so so we'd love it and uh, i guess that with that tim are we good to go yeah yeah we have a patron i'm happy with that (laughs) i feel like a sculptor so Bye. All right. Feel cool. Peace out, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Come back next Thursday. Thanks for getting a little crazy with us early on there. Oh, man. We're all crazy. <laughs> and uh, all the music that you're listening to right now is from John Stewart, as it virtually always is in the show. So thanks, John, for that. Hopefully you'll be around before long. Uh, actually, he's got his honeymoon coming up, so it might be a while. And that reminds me also with Christmas coming up, We might have to do some unedited shows, which we know are everyone's favorite. So keep an eye out for those. Peace, everyone. Until next week. Oh, Merry Christmas. This will be coming out just a few days before Christmas. I can't forget that. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Juju Kwanzaa, or whatever they say about that. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) 
<laughs> and we'll see you next Thursday. See you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Fuck everybody else. Peace. Thanks, John, for the music. Bye-bye. LFRM, FMMM had better music. <laughs>